Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Middle High School. This is a video on metals and non-metals. Um, in our periodic table, we notice that if we look at the funny reddish um, burgundy color here, uh, most of the periodic table represents metals. Okay, the first group, okay, group one is called alkali metals. Group two is called alkaline earth metals. Three through twelve would be the transition metals, okay, which normally form colored compounds and have half-filled D sub-levels. Um, these two guys at the bottom here are called the lanthanide and actinide series, but we don't really get into that, so don't worry about those. But just know that the majority of the periodic table um, consists of metals. Also, please note, guys, that even though hydrogen is in group one, it is not a metal, okay, so non-metal. Uh, the reason why it's in group one is because it has only one electron, so it falls under the category of um, having one valence electron, which all the guys in group one have. Uh, metals tend to be malleable, have luster, um, duct are ductile, are good conductors of um, thermal and uh, electrical energy and have low ionization and electronegativities. Now I did ionization energy and electronegativity in another video in periodic trends, so you can check that out if you need to um, brush up on that. Um, metals also tend to have high melting points as compared to non-metals. And one of the things that metals uh, want to do or like to do in terms of attraction is that they want to release or give off um, their electrons, their valence electrons. In doing that, they form positive. Okay, they form positive ions. All right, also known as cations. Okay, and they have this ability. Okay, in terms of the of doing that, and also on um, these properties right here. All right, relation these properties right here. They have this ability because they have mobile valence electrons. Remember we said the positive kernel is located in a, a sea of valence electrons which are delocalized. So that's the that's this property right here called metallic bonding which allows metals to have all these properties over here. Okay. Now once again just as a brief recap, malleability is the ability to form something metals into shapes. The luster refers to shine. Ductility refers to the ability of being pulled into wires and thermal conductivity and uh, electrical conductivity could be thought of as a light bulb right here, okay? Because if you ever had a chance to put your hand near a light bulb, um, you notice that the heat is generated in addition to the light. Alrighty. Now, when we look at non-metals, right, the good thing is that if we can remember the properties of metals, we can do a switch in, in terms of opposites, and we can figure out the properties of non-metals. Non-metals, for the majority of them, tend to be soft. They tend to be brittle. For example, sulfur, okay, comes with a powdery, uh, dusty form that when you touch it, it's, it, 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 it crumbles up. So that's a brittle part of it. Um, they tend to be also non-metals poor conductors of thermal and electrical energy. Um, compared to metals, non-metals have low melting points, all right? And they have high ionization and electronegativities, all right? So what does that mean? They want to hold on to electrons and attract electrons towards themselves. They tend to form negative ions, okay, which are called anions, all right? So Non-metals tend to form negative ions, metals tend to form positive ions. And when later on in um, the topic of bonding, we see that sometimes they help each other out in this respect. Um, I just want to talk about um, group 17 for a quick second. Group 17, right? Fluorine and chlorine, okay, fluorine and chlorine um, tend to exist as gases. Okay, bromine, right? Bromine is our only non-metal which exists as a liquid okay and this has this funny um vapor right there. this brownish vapor that gives off is distinct and iodine is a solid which we talked about in class iodine okay is a solid which tends to undergo something called sublimation of facies that we talked about earlier in the term now sublimation simply is the fact that it goes from straight from the solid phase into the gas phase okay now, we're winding down. Now, I want to mention one last thing. In terms of non-metals, right, and um, metals, we in the, in the periodic table, we have group 18. Right? Remember we talked about group 18 in terms of having 
um, full valence shells and stable octets except for helium. Well, these guys tend to exist as monoatomic atoms, all right? Now, mono means one, so they exist as individual atoms. That coincides with the fact that they don't want to react with anything. They really don't want to form any compounds. So they're very, very, very unreactive. Now, the guys, um, in terms of H, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and the guys in group 17, all right, these guys in group 17, they tend to be diatomic. Now, these are things that you have to remember, all right? Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen in group 17 tend to be diatomic when they're by themselves, and the guys in group 18 tend to be monoatomic, the guys in group 18, the noble gases. Um, as always, hard work and sacrifice equals success. Please review metals and non-metals. Um, we know semi-metals tend to have properties of both things. Um, study, study, study. Take care.